All right, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at demand shocks. So, um, really, we have positive and we have negative demand shock here, and you can see that both models are starting off exactly the same. They are both in short run equilibrium. Um, so we have everything the same. Remember again, our model we're showing two things: we're comparing aggregate price level and output. So how much things cost versus how much is being produced in an economy. And what we're looking at today is really simple, just what happens when we have a change in aggregate demand. So we have a positive demand shock, negative demand shock. And like it would sound, a positive demand shock just means that there is an increase in aggregate demand. So some kind of event has taken place that causes aggregate demand to increase. And we have these five events down here. Um, so this is kind of similar to the video we did earlier that shifts in the AD curve. Um, the difference here this time is that one only had the aggregate demand curve. Now we have short run aggregate supply graphed here also. So this way we can see the effect on APL and aggregate output. So what happens when we have a positive demand shock if aggregate demand increases? Which way is our curve going to shift? Hopefully you guys have already said it. And if you're drawing along with me, we're drawing a aggregate demand curve shifting to the right. So we have a rightward shift of our aggregate demand curve. It looks something like this. Mine is a little bit crooked, but that's kind of good because remember, they don't have to be perfect. It's not an art class. Everything doesn't have to be perfectly to scale or anything like that. The main idea is that you are showing a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve. And now we have our new place of output, we have our new price level. So what has happened to output and to price level? Well, as we can see, price level increased and so did output. So when we have a positive demand shock, both output and price level increase, which is what we see here. Let me just label that E2. That's the only thing I'm missing there. Go ahead and do that. And so that's what our model of a positive demand shock is going to look like. So the next question is what would cause that? Again, I'm not going to go over this in too great of detail because there are there was the other video that I already did. If we have an increase in wealth, so if the stock market goes up, remember this is wealth not for one person, this isn't one person getting rich. This is talking about the entire economy, aggregate. So what would make everybody feel wealthier, or most people, it doesn't have to be every single person, but most people in an economy feel wealthier. There are two main things. And so you might want to write these down next to wealth. Don't just put an increase in wealth. An increase in stock market prices. Um, most people have some kind of investments. It might be their retirement plans. It might be other investments. They might invest directly in the market or they might have mutual funds. It doesn't really matter. The idea though is that when the market rises, it makes most people better off in the country. Same way with home prices. Not everybody owns a house, but if the price of houses goes up, it makes people wealthier, or at least feel wealthier, because they have, they know that their house is worth more and that they could sell it. So guess what people do when they know that they could sell their house and make money if they needed to? They tend to spend more of the money that they already have. Their income doesn't change, um, but they feel wealthier, so they spend more money. So aggregate demand increases, shifts to the right. Okay, if we have an uh, we have changing expectations. This is where consumers are more optimistic. So if you feel like the economy is getting better, it'll actually increase aggregate demand. And later on, we're going to talk about how that is a very powerful force in the economy, expectations. But for now, optimistic expectations shift right. Talked about this in the previous video also. If we have a decrease, um, a lower amount of existing physical stock of capital, um, that's going to cause us to demand more because we need to replenish and replace. So a low existing stock of physical capital will increase aggregate demand. And for now, we're just going to stick with saying for fiscal and monetary policy without defining them specifically, we're just going to use the word expansionary it will cause this positive demand shock. Okay. Now, on the other hand, we have a negative demand shock over here and it's going to be just the opposite. So increase right, decrease left. So aggregate demand curve is going to shift to the left. And when we see that happen there, so 80, now we label that one and two, shift left. We have our new point of equilibrium and we can probably see it just by sight, you can notice it, but I want you guys again, get in the habit, draw it out to each axis. Um, don't just leave it there. You can probably see that price level has fallen. You can see that output has fallen, get in the habit. Show it to yourself, no reason to miss something easy. 
So with a negative demand shock, we have a decrease in both price level and output. So we're producing less, but whatever we are producing is cheaper because there is a decreasing falling demand for it, um, for the economy. This isn't one product, remember, aggregate demand. Reasons that would cause this, a decrease in wealth. So home prices fall drastically, stock market crashes, people have less money, they don't want to spend as much because now we're nervous. Um, we have less money, we, it's not a good time. So aggregate demand shifts to the left, um, decreases. If we have pessimistic expectations, so we are convinced the economy is going to get worse, we might decide to save our money. Um, again, this is economy-wide, not one person or one household. If we have an increase, a high existing stock of physical capital, means it does not need to be replenished. Large inventories don't need to be replenished. So as a result of that, we don't buy as much, we don't demand as much, AD shifts left. And then for now, again, we're just gonna suffice to say that contractionary fiscal and monetary policy would also decrease aggregate demand. And we'll leave it to future videos to really get into more detail about fiscal and monetary policy. All right, till next time. This has been a Money Production.